Welcome back guys to Miles Edgeworth Ace Attorney Investigations where last episode we came to the conclusion that a third person had been at the scene of the crime and established that there was someone else with possible motive to kill both victims after Gumshoe found himself in the firing line once again. Now we move on obviously to a Von Karma family meeting to learn more. Sir, what is to become of the trial into the Kodopian Embassy staff member's murder? Indeed. Since both the suspect and the prosecutor are now dead, the case will be dismissed. In other words, the trial ends here prematurely. Ha! Huh. Looks like you have to wait just a bit longer for your big debut. I suppose it can't be helped. The evidence for this trial will be transferred to you in a little while. Sir, what do you think about the murder of the Kodopian Embassy staff member? And the murders of Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell? What an outrageous circus it has all become. That Faraday brought it all upon himself with his naivety. An outrageous circus. Right, sir. I grow weary of this topic, Edworth. I will have you assigned to a different case. Papa, you'll come and watch my courtroom debut next, won't you? Hmm. I'll consider it. Sir, if I may, please allow me to continue with my investigation. Whatever for? I know there is already a suspect in the murder of Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell. However, there is not enough evidence to prove that it was he who committed the crime. I'd like to continue investigating in order to find the perfect proof of his guilt. The perfect proof? Don't make me laugh. A worthless person like you has no right to claim such a thing as perfection. Um, Papa? Who do you think is the real culprit behind these murders? Miles and I, we're competing to see who can find the real killer first. Plus, being able to investigate a real crime scene is a really rare opportunity. It would give us some real life experience, wouldn't you agree? Hmm. If you want to investigate this case that much, then do as you wish. Then, you're allowing us to continue? In court, your top priority is to win, and a solid investigation is one of the keys to winning. We have to make sure you become recognized as a first-rate prosecutor, don't we? It wouldn't be very interesting otherwise. I'm returning home now. Edworth, Francisca, see to it I'm not disturbed, save for the results of your competition. Yes, sir. Of course, Papa. Francisca, thank you. What are you thanking me for? Your logic earlier was built on that scruffy detective's lie. That means that the competition is still on. Yes, just as you wished. Hm, I couldn't let you get off so easily. Now then, let's see how well you fare on the investigation from here, Miles Edworth. I know I don't have enough information yet, so my first order of business will be to question anyone involved with this case. We've got multiple people involved with the case, and this guy who needs to call a plumber. I can't stop the water, sir! It seems that the man who was here earlier broke up by drinking from it too much. A bunch of fools who pretended to not see the foolishly foolish actions of a foolish fool. Well then, why don't you lend the officer a hand? Hmm, as if I should have anything to do with this. Besides, that water drinking fool's mouth is a thing that officers should be covering. Let's give that officer a description of the water guzzler later. She seems to have quite the grudge. It sounds to me like someone wanted a drink. Uh, uh, what's the matter, officer? I'll be standing here forever, sir, and I really need to go to the bathroom. Why don't you just make a quick trip? The nearest one isn't that far, is it? N no, it's a short way down the hall beyond those doors, but I don't want to be blamed for anything that might happen while I'm gone. So, uh, I'm going to hold it. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe can be a positive influence on the force after all. By his failures, it's probably what Gumshoe's gone and done. Sir, nothing to report, sir. Is there no one who will make this man take responsibility for his actions on the job? Looks like we have no choice but to report this to Papa. Then this guard can have fun in a waking nightmare after being awakened from his dream. Actually, let's not. I kind of feel sorry for him now. One last police officer. Wow, this thing is so incredibly detailed! My inner modeling fanboy is impressed! Hmm, I'm not exactly a fan of plastic models, per se. But even I can sense the superb quality of this model. I simply cannot comprehend how that man feels so much love for such a trifle. 
Oh, I, I see. You're a disciple of my father, so you would do well to guard yourself against an interest in such unproductive things. Yes, perhaps I should take up whipping people like the young lady over here. Maybe I should. Miss you. Oh, it's you, Edgeworth. And who are you? Wait, you were at the crime scene just now, weren't you? You should be disbarred for not knowing who I am. I am Francisco Von Karma, and I am about to become the successor to the family name. About to? I guess that means that for now you're still just another kid. In which case it's only natural that I didn't know who you are. What? Why are you whipping me? Anyway, it looks like they're planning to hold the evidence a bit longer. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's waiting. I'm terribly sorry, but I have to... I have, but a few more questions to ask of you. <laughs> Look at you, eyebrows scrunched with lines on your forehead. And that... to ask of you. <laughs> what exactly is so funny? Sorry, I just bad at dealing with a super serious atmosphere. Apparently they failed to teach you proper behaviour at a crime scene in law school. Ah! Whew. I feel much better now, so what is it you want to talk about? I'd like to inquire as to where you were at the time of the murder. We were in defendant lobby number one the whole time up until we heard the gunshot. And by we, I mean Mr. Bad. If you don't believe me, feel free to ask him yourself. You were with Detective Bad? Why? We had a little something to discuss, that's all. Okay, tell me what. So I take it that you were in acquaintances with Detective Bad? Yeah, he was detective in charge of the KGA incident. Detective Bad is also related to that incident? That's right, he was the one who was supposed to protect my sister, Cece. Cece. But you know how that turned out, don't you, Edgeworth? How's Edgeworth? I have no idea what you two are talking about. I've heard of the KGA incident from my papa. But how does that case relate to you, Miss Yu? The victim of that case, Cece Yu, was my little sister. <laughs> You're making that super serious face again! I'm fine, really. I just make it a point to rub some more salt in his wounded pride every time I see him. The way she talks about doing that as she laughs away is kind of creepy. Oh, speaking of Mr. Bad, he and Mr. Faraday, I say they met up just about every single time the Atagrasu made a move. It was practically a given that the two would meet up at every one of the crime scenes. I see. We did mention that he is in charge of the Atagrasu investigation earlier. Maybe I should ask her what she knows about the Yetagrasu in more details. Well, that's ended up at the very bottom of the list, so let's go down the list to the time of the murder next. You claim that at the time of the murder you were with Detective Bad. But don't you lawyers usually discuss the trial with your clients during a recess? We do, and that's what I was planning to do. Mr. Faraday was being rather threatening, and he dragged Mr. Rell away. After that, Mr. Bad came into lobby number one, so we just stayed there and talked. And what did you talk with Detective Bad about? Nothing interesting, I just insulted him some. Talk about how the trial was going, and then I insulted him some more. Bloody. When she's not laughing, her mouth seemingly spews nothing but insults. Anyway, Mr. Bad and I were in defendant lobby number one when the murders occurred. So I really can't tell you anything about the hallway or lobby number two. I see. Mackerel. I'd like to ask you a few questions about your client, Mr. Mackerel. Now, your client first claimed to be the Atagrasu, is that correct? Yeah. Once I heard that it was the Atagrasu that made off with the evidence from KG-8, I began to ask Mr. Rell all sorts of questions, but to no avail. Turns out Mr. Rell was not the Atagrasu. He had just made that up. He made it up. Mr. Rell's crime was caught on tape by the security cameras. But there was no footage of him sneaking into the Codopian Embassy itself. Hold on for just one second. Then you mean to say that you knew that he was not the real Yata de Grassi, and that he was just another cold-blooded killer, and you were ready to defend him? Yes. That's right. I see. So a defense lawyer is actually just someone whose job is to cover for criminals. That's why defense lawyers are so detestable. They're no match for some karmas. <laughs> I don't believe it! You're serious! Why do you save that face for something really worth being serious about? And Edgeworth, do you remember what I said earlier? I have my own agenda. I'm still love for leads regarding the KGA incident, alright? 
And for that, you have not a single qualm about defending a known killer. Don't put words in my mouth. I said no such thing. The only way I had to get close to Mr. Rell was to be his lawyer. I had no intention of covering for him. Ever. So don't you dare suggest I was going to. I'm sorry. Forgive my rashness. Interesting. Yataglasu. Miss you. I was wondering if you could tell me about the Yataglasu. The Yataglasu, huh? I don't really know much about the character myself, but I do get a lot of consultation requests from companies to defend them. Requests from companies? The Yataglasu isn't some petty thief out for money, you know. Hmm. Alright then, perhaps the Yataglasu is in the business of stealing people's lives. You're not very funny or witty, are you, little Miss Von Karma? Ha! Francisca, be careful about who you whip. Choose carefully or we may be sued by- Ah! There, I chose carefully, just like you wanted. <laughs> that just now was hilarious, little missy. Of course it was. What is wrong with these two women? Why does my pain give them delight? And, so in the end, what is the Adaglasu? I have to say I had never even heard of this thief when I was in Germany. The Adaglasu deals in information. Namely, in digging out dirt about backroom dealings and the like of companies. The Adaglasu is a vigilante who steals such info and then makes it public for all to see. Hmm. Vigilante or not, this person sounds like a, just another criminal to me. I suppose you could put it that way too. But either way, I get a lot more clients now, thanks to that thief. Sounds like Miss Yu is profiting nicely. Hmm, I suppose I've gotten all I can out of Miss Yu. I should move on and speak with Detective Gumshoe now. As you say, game, I can speak to... Francisco, though. Yes, what is it? Tell me about today's trial. Give me your information, too. You can't just keep stealing all mine. It feels like there's a whole backside to this case we're not seeing. And here we had a thought that it was a case where the two men had killed each other. We're lacking information. And as a Von Karma, I can hardly call this a perfect investigation. Indeed, it is as you say. Ah! I can't believe we agree on something! Just what is so revolting about agreeing? Anyway, our first move should be to speak with everyone related to this case. Indeed. Even if you had not said it, I was planning to do so anyway. Ah! What was that lash for? Maybe I shouldn't have spoken with her. This was a mistake. Is it the gumshoe? Hey, it's you, pal. Yeah, yeah. Yow! As am I. I don't think you needed to whip him to let him know that. I, I didn't do it, pal. I swear my honor as a detective. I really didn't. Your words are useless. Place my I place my trust only in the evidence, detective. Once the investigation is fully over, and should we find out that you are the killer? There will be no mercy to be had for you. <laughs> Hello, our pal. You're not worried, right? After all, you have nothing to worry about if you really are innocent, that is. That's right. Hey, pal, go and do your perfect investigation and get the real killer for me, will you? Hmm. I would have done so even had you not requested me to, Detective. Right, your motive. Just because he docked your pay, would you murder someone? I think we know by now, no, but still, they're getting to know each other. So, you and Mr. Faraday had a small meeting last week, did you? And what exactly did you do to make him so angry? I just asked Detective Bad the same thing myself, pal. Turns out he was mad at me because of my very first day as a detective. I reported into my usual post and said the Criminal Affairs Department. By the time I got down to Criminal Affairs, I was really, really late. And that's when he gave me that huge speech. I remember doing the same exact thing in elementary school. On the first day of school every year, I'd always wind up going down to my old classroom. Pathetic for the detective to be compared to a mere school child. Well, during his school child recess. You claimed to be standing guard in front of the door to lobby number two during the recess. However, when did you receive the order to do so and from whom? Um, earlier, at around 3.20 a.m. from Detective Bad Pal. Today's trial took a really crazy turn. So I was told to make sure nothing happened to Mr. Faraday. And yet something did happen to him, correct? It looks like it was a total waste of manpower to assign you to guard duty. No! 
Ow! Your words sting worse than your whip, pal. So it was Detective Bad who ordered him to stand guard, huh? The next step. Now then, Detective Gumshoe. Is there anything else you'd like to tell me? No, no, uh, not a thing, pal. In that case, allow us to take a look at what you were carrying on your personage. Ah! Wait, you can't do that! There's nothing of any particular value here. Well, my own cats and badge were confiscated by the set of bad, so, you know... And what is that open envelope I see sticking out of your coat pocket? Ah! Uh, hands off, pal! Just show it to us already! Yo! Annual bonus check within. Five dollar total, except there is no check inside. You've had your look, now give it back, pal! It's my first bonus as a brand new detective! I just got it and cashed it today! I had literally no cash on me up until I did, you know? So that envelope is really special to me, now give it back! You don't need rubbish like this, don't worry, we'll throw it away for you later. How could you? Right, we took the annual bonus envelope, that's interesting. I'm sorry, but I need to take him in for questioning, now. I think I've asked him just about everything I needed to. No, wait. Since you became a suspect, there is one piece of evidence I should reconfirm. Officer, I ask that you wait a second. I still have one thing I'd like to reconfirm with Detective Gumshoe. Understood, but please make it brief, sir. I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. I must confirm whether or not his testimony about when the crime occurred is the truth. Well, if I can't get it as a thing, I guess I'm doing this. You told me earlier that you heard no sound other than the gunshot in the hallway. Is that correct? No mistake bad, pal. Hmm. Then you are also claiming that no one passed through the hallway either. Is that also correct? Yep. Not even a single out passed through that hall while I was on duty. Hmm. Hmm. You do realize that the lie you're telling is only making life more difficult for yourself. Huh? Oh. But, but it's true! I didn't see anyone go through the hallway and I didn't hear anything else, pal! I bet the killer found a way to kill the two guys that's beyond what I can even imagine! So he intends to continue telling this ridiculous lie. But why would he do so, given the situation he's in? I believe a thorough investigation of the hallway in front of the defendant lobbies is in order. You! No! Nah. My anus! How could you have not noticed that coming? Ah, ah. Wasn't that the child I changed money for earlier? Thanks! That's exactly what I needed! Kids can sometimes be so cruel. It looks like she dropped something. She drops a Swiss roll. Evidence discovered in the third floor lobby. Nom nom nom. Maybe we should arrest the girl. She might turn out to be a valuable lead. Ugh. I believe some sort of punishment may need to be dealt the next time we meet. I believe I've asked all that I need to of this man. Now for Detective Bad and the judge. We have to confirm who is correct, the judge or that scrap face, right? I suppose we should inspect the hallway in front of lobby number two next then. Hmm. I suppose so. Shall we head on over, Francisca? Bye, Gumshoe. May I have a word with you, Detective Gumshoe? Ah, What in the world am I supposed to do, pal? I don't think it'll be of much use right now. Let's continue with the investigation. I suppose so. I suppose we go and inspect the hallway we're standing guard in next. Which is which way? Not that way. That's the courtroom. So it must be this way. Right, courthouse specials. A Swiss roll part of it? I wonder. Look at all these ants still. So, do you see anything else? Hmm. No, I don't think so. I see. Well, thanks for your cooperation. Ah, it's nothing. Just doing my duty as a defender of the law. That'll be all for now. 
I'll ask again if I have any other questions. Any time, detective. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a few loose ends I have to tie up. Oh, so that's your prosecutor, Mr. Von Carbo, recommended, right? My name is Miles Edgeworth, Your Honor. And I'm Manfred Von Karma's daughter, Francisca Von Karma. I'm set to become the successor to my genius father any day now, Your Honor. I see. This is a new prosecutor recommended by the- Ah! I- I bit my tongue! Are you right, Your Honor? Please feel free to refer to me as just Miss Von Karma, Your Honor. As for him, just Edgeworth is fine. Apparently, somebody doesn't feel that I'm worthy of a proper title. Oh! Very well then, I shall call you Miss Von Karma and Mr. Prosecutor Edgeworth. Your Honor, Mr. Edgeworth is fine, sir. Now, about your earlier testimony. Yes, what about it, Mr. Edgeworth? I would like to ask you a few questions about what exactly you saw. Alright, after all, it's my duty to clarify my testimony as a defender of the law. I greatly appreciate your cooperation, Your Honor. Now, the first thing I will need to do is figure out that detective's exact movements. So our investigation begins by talking to the judge? Your Honor, now I'd like to ask you a few questions if you don't mind. Where were you at the time of the murder? I, 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 do you suspect me of something? No, nothing of the sort, Your Honor. Um, very well, you may continue with your testimony. Your Honor, it's your testimony I'm after. Oh! I had no idea you were chasing after me or my testimony. I'm beginning to sense that I might want to avoid being in a trial run by this judge. Too bad. Let's see here. Now then, how should I put this? When you get to be my age, you need to pay more frequent visits to the restroom. Hmm. If you go take a look through the window at the end of this hall, you'll see a small window. That is the window to the men's restroom. In other words, you can see clearly into the hallway from the men's restroom. When I was going into the restroom, that detective, Gumshoe, is it? Well, he was standing in front of the vending machines, buying something from it. Hmm. However, and this I couldn't believe, when I was about to exit the restroom, there was not a soul in the hallway anymore. Your Honor, if you could please come down and explain it to me rationally. Oh, I'm really sorry. Please let me regain my composure. It was really suspicious. That's what my finely honed judge's intuition said. Although, well, until the murders occurred, I just sort of brushed it off. <laughs> Apparently, this judge doesn't understand the concept of staying calm. That's probably all I'm going to find out from His Honor. Mr. Edgeworth, may I return to my other duties now? Yes, I'm sorry to have held you up. Thank you for your cooperation, Your Honor. Ho <laughs> ho! Any time, Mr. Edgeworth, any time! The churches in this country seem rather friendly. Yes, if not a little wishy-washy. However, I hear that they are known to hand down very fair verdicts. Somehow. Somehow. You find something, officer. I think there's a five dollar bill back there. Come on, just a little more. Is there no one working this crime scene who isn't a total waste of living tissue? Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a single person we can deem useful here. Have you found any suspicious fingerprints, officer? Nope, just the fingerprints of those involved with the case, sir. I guess we know all of the players in this case then, huh? It would appear that way, but I have a nagging feeling that we're missing something. And I suspect that what we're missing is hiding right here in this crime scene somewhere. He's making a most ridiculous looking face. That may be, but at least he doesn't look like someone who would tell a lie on purpose. I suppose, but to a Von Kame, evidence is the only thing that carries any weight. Of course, at any rate, this poster seems to be of no use to us right now. Fire extinguisher. There are no signs that this fire extinguisher was used in the crime. If you could already tell from the distance, then why are you wasting your time examining it? Francisca, let's not try to rush your absolute genius. Yes. Don't rush my genius. Aha! Hmm. It would appear that this vending machine sells snacks and various other foods. A vending machine that sells courthouse special goods, as a few sweet items are for sale. 
Just lovely. What will they think of next? Don't be a jerk in court like these beef jerks. One packet for nine dollar. Defendant's fresh milk. One half pint for seven dollars. Stay neutral as the Swiss do until the end with ease for six dollars. They're awfully overpriced. The lineup is simply awful. Period. Speaking of snacks, I wonder if that Swiss roll the little girl dropped is from this machine. Hmm, I was wondering about that myself. I mean, let's examine this Swiss roll then. Stay neutral as the Swiss do until the end with ease. The end of what? Well, I assume it means the end of the trial. I suppose this means that one should eat these during a recess. You can't eat during a trial, so I suppose the only time you can eat them is now, huh? I wouldn't mind if you wanted to eat one now. They come in packs of two, after all. Hmm. We're in the middle of an investigation. Besides, I don't have six dollars on me. If you want, we can pull our money and buy a pack together. If I have to split it with you, then I don't want it! No, would have guessed. There's no money in there. What's the orange juice tagline? Well, it's looking bad. Blind your opposition with some OJ. Are they promoting violence? Don't worry, my whip will make sure that no anybody following this advice won't be for long. Compared to the sting of a whip, the sting of orange juice may not be so bad. Milk. Defendant's fresh milk. What exactly is that supposed to mean? I bet it means that the milk is freshly milked by various defendants on trial right now. No, I think it might mean that this was milked right here from the various defendants. Miles Edgeworth, you can't possibly be serious! Of course not. I mean, what you said wasn't exactly intelligent either. When you're in hot water, you might need a hot dog. Hmm. It looks like this slogan was decided for a public contest. And the winner was Prosecutor Winston Payne. Hmm. What a pathetic slogan. No presence at all. Now if it was up to me, it would read... If you leave matters in the Von Karma's hand, everyone in court will be found guilty dogs. Objection! Overruled. Oh, don't be a jerk in court, like these beef jerks. I see. Objection! Miles Edgeworth, wouldn't you agree that it's a very clever pun? Do you really think they put that much effort into the product name? Even a foolish fool could understand the foolish thinking of the fool who made it up. You're acting so foolishly that I got so fairly mad and I am now utterly famished. If you wanted a pack of these, all you had to do was ask like a normal person. Okay, we're going to check out the ham sandwich next. This is wasting time, isn't it? I would let the prosecution and the defense make a ham sandwich out of you. It sounds like it's directed that ham of a judge. Well, it certainly isn't directed to me. And I can have maneuver him any day. Is there really nothing else on here then? Just weird slogans for us to read if we so wish to. Hi, Mr. Bad. I'm gonna look through here because it's supposedly the way to you see into crime scene. I went to rest in this lab and inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. <laughs> Let's check this weird suspiciousness first. Hmm, what is this? It's a pink colored piece of trash made of rubber. It's a balloon. A piece of pink trash found on the windowsill of the hallway window made of rubber. Hmm, I feel like I've seen something like this before. Well, all I see is a piece of garbage. But, you know, the fact that there is a litterer running loose inside this courthouse is simply unforgivable. Ah! It's not like it was I who littered. Rubbish belongs in a rubbish bin. Ah! Look at the trail of ants, then. The ants are hard at work carrying their food home. It's a marvel they can pick up such comparatively large objects of their size. Well, if you want to carry the mighty Von Karma name and not be squished under it, you'd better work extra hard, just like these ants. The same goes for you, Francesca. So that window on the other side belongs to the men's restroom. I can't see it. At your height, I'm not surprised. Ah! I guess short people have feelings too. Alright, nothing interesting there. What about the... this here? Ah! What's the matter? I pricked myself on one of this cactus's needles. I didn't think the needles on this thing would be so sharp. Well, what did you expect? Can you imagine how bad it would be if you were hit on the head by one of these? Anyway, this cactus seems to be unrelated to our case. Do you really think so? Because I believe that this cactus sitting on this windowsill is completely related. Uh, okay. Body cactus sitting on the hallway window's windowsill. Its needles are dangerous. Plus balloon. 
Oh, well then, I look forward to your explanation on how exactly it is related. Yes. I mean, what's my current logic pool at? Obviously, there's definitely something to go through. The pink piece of trash and the windowsill cactus sound like they can be easily mixed up together. Because we know it's a balloon. This pink rubbery substance. I saw this in a different form earlier today. I believe this is a piece of a pop balloon. I suppose that's possible. The balloon probably got a little too close to our friend, the windowsill cactus. That would be the logical conclusion, yes. It's a balloon piece. It is now be named. Alright, so uh, we'll leave the vending machine in a window that no barred window for the time being. As it looks like we have more of the scene to check out. A handprint? Something under the chair too, by the look of things? But we'll continue with our investigation, for it is the end of yet another episode. Next time on Miles Edgeworth, Ace Attorney Investigations, we continue to check out this hallway and find everything it has. But at this point, a gunshot sound, a balloon that was popped. Could the time of the murder drift quite severely? That is the next question. Or I think that is the next reveal. Bye now next time, and I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.